What's up, everybody? <laughs> See, this is the Griot's Hip Hop, and you're welcome to the Aura Traditional Book Club. Are you ready? Let's go. Uh, a child of Italy. I learned what every dreaming child needs to know. That no horizon is so far. You cannot get above it or beyond it. The first memory I have of my father is of a slim young man with a straight nose and a beautiful mild black hair and grey green eyes behind glasses. Dressed in strange green trousers which had some golden stars and bells on it. I remember being embarrassed that he did not wear a jacket like all the other men in our household. That they were old men and he young. He was in fact in his late twenties. Did not make any difference to much at the sense of propriety. Your many in those days wore jackets and ties Even in the morning in the country I lived in my grandfather's country house Attached to his silk factory In a village in the hills of Veneto With my mother and her family of old men and women All the young men we at war We had moved here to escape the bombing in town I was a bunch Papa little girl inquisitive And always seeking adventure and magic As a baby and then a toddler And the only child in our house So that had everyone's attention at time In those days of years I must have represented for them hope of the future In the world of dirty now that surrounded By their love and kindness I grew up with great self-confidence My earliest memories of the war yeah, Of being carried through the night By a running adult Who was the area shelter at the end of our gardens And the people running with us Looking anxiously up at the sky Where some small red and green lights move In the darkness with a threatening noise of thunder They talked in front of me of my father And of their apprehensions about his fate a parachutist and a medical officer fighting somewhere on the front line a war which he did not believe when Italy was divided by a civil war he was being posted to the free south approved by an officer of the British intelligence service he had agreed to go back to the north to fight in the mountains around Eugene which he knew extremely well a passionate mountaineer like all his ancestors from the Fadia Oster he had climbed the Luna for pleasure since he was barely 11 12 years old uh, since he was barely 11, 12 years old From the warm balmy coast of Pugla They parachuted him in the dark of an autumn night Onto the hills of the Cody Luna in northern Italy Back again in hell to fight For nearly two years my father was in the mountains of Fruli Living the free but lonely life of the partisan Freezing and starving in bands uh, Freezing and starving in bands Stalking and being stuck Seeing destruction and friends died the one day he was captured by fellow Italians belonging to the far right wing of the fascist party the notorious Desi Mamas they threw him into prison in the sinister castle of Cone Giuliano, a theater of grotesque torture uh, no one had ever come out of it my father did when he heard that the end of the war was approaching and that the prisoner days were numb but he managed to escape in the night with a friend my, fa- my mother alerted by a spy carried me that same night through a wood to a monastery where we were given asylum she was just in time they had come to take my mother and me in retaliation but had found us gone they arrested my grandfather instead as a hostage later they had to let him go again in those days there was always tension in the air of which we my alali or senses i was perfectly aware yeah i was perfectly aware <laughs> i was perfectly aware the repeatedly murmured name of my father whom I had never seen made me perceive him as a superman and I wondered if I would ever see him. The one day he was there, the war had finished and he came back still in the still in the khaki uniform of the allies with an Englishman by the foreign name Nicholson. A war name for his real name was Robert whom I owe my nickname Cookie. Uh, my father came up with some things of condensed milk which I like and corned beef which I did not uh, which I did not and corned beef which I did not the grease and metal taste was foreign to my tentative tongue the Englishman gave me my first chocolate bars with the return of my father and of the others who had survived the streets of the village and our house were suddenly full of young men uh, there was an atmosphere of excitement and euphoria people sang and danced outside in the spring evenings and my father 
Ghost Boy sounded high and clear in the nostalgic songs of the party sense. My mother laughed often, she was expecting another child. Then my life changed because of the new spirit which had entered it. My father had the gift to make me believe that there was always a new adventure, something waiting to be discovered. If only we can take the time to look for it and have the courage to jump on his drive and energetic attitude to life galvanized me, making me perceive that there were no limits as to what one could achieve. Uh, I was keen to explore and eager to follow in his footsteps. Like him, I had never known a moment of boredom. He loved nature and creatures, wild and tame, and he could not be a cruelty to animals. He instilled the same feelings in me once he had found an innocuous grass snake, which had been almost cut in half by the blade of the lawnmower. Which had almost been cut in half by the blade of the lawnmower. True. Which had almost been cut in half by the blade of the lawnmower. Which had almost been cut in half by the blade of the fucking lawnmower. Mm. Mm. Yo. Yeah, which had almost be cut in half by the blade of the lawnmower. He stood the wound and to help me overcome my natural revulsion, he had insisted that I should assist him, passing him the instruments one by one. Later, he would rescue a baby fox and a velvet monkey from a pet shop where they had been imprisoned and exposed to the horridly indifference of passerby. Uh, I remember the small, inquisitive, whiskered red face peering out of the folds of his winter coat. The monkey became a real menace, possessive to was him and jealous of all females uh, see in the spring i would take her to with me to my school where she sat on a tree outside during the lesson jarring at the students under the protection and to the care of the school's caretaker he loved everything connected with africa having been in his youth a soldier in somalia where he had found a beautiful girlfriend but lost his dreams as long as I could remember, there had always been pets in our house. Both my parents were particularly fond of dogs, especially fox terriers, small and compact, brave and intelligent. Fox terriers had the little sense of their diminutive size, with the compass set with aggressiveness and a highly strong character. They need a great deal of exercise. My father walked the dogs every evening, and I usually accompanied him at the time of day when bad fly and the backing of our dogs pursuing a cat or a water rat grew fainter in the distance I walked by my father's side talking chemistry in the twilight and my youth did not matter some of those sunset conversations were forever embedded in my memory so as some special moments which I shall always treasure like when he would come home with some books for me to read cookie he would call from the hallway come and choose a book I, with great anticipation I ran to meet him from an open suitcase assorted volumes sup supplied by a dealer in second hand books uh, spit open onto the grey marble floor my father gave me the first choice and once I had choose from the scattered pile books of which interested me the most he told me something about the content the style the story the author he, all, he allowed me absolute freedom uh, to select whatever I wanted regardless of my age Thus I accumulated a vast, without any effort, a vast, if a methodical knowledge of literature and poetry. Yeah. A vast, if a methodical knowledge of literature and poetry. Which had almost been cut in half by the blade of the lawnmower. Literature and poetry. Knowledge of literature and poetry. Uh. At an age when other children were concentrating on novels and comics from Edgar Allan Poe in translation as we are other non-Italian writers to Boccaccio from Mark Twain to Vincent Hugo or Ibsen from Hemingway to Machiavelli from Sappho to Saint Exupery, Byron to Stoliopadi or Lamantine my late childhood and early adolescence were spent on devouring any book I could lay my hands on my father's only condition was quality most of and I will 
always be in his depth for more than matters to his high standards most of his friends were writers or artists and our house was always open to them i love listening to their conversations i love literature i love poetry and was fascinated by their harmonious rhythm often my father and i would recite classic italian poems in a duet reading from the same page we both enjoyed those unique moments and you both those unique and inspiring moments and verses still live in my subconscious often to emerge as a quotation to underline a moment a feeling a particular event those are among the happiest memories of my childhood and in every man in my life i look for a reflection of my father he had a passion for archaeology together we will explore the caves in the mountain in, uh, the caves in the hills of montello probing the walls with torches discovered bones and teeth of Neolithic cave bears. He taught me how to look for pointed arrowheads, chipped out of grey and chipped out of grey and pink stone by some skin and four clad ancestors. Uh, yeah, we found we found Roman coins in recently plough river beds and and foray in and foray in uh, and in foray in river and in, in drained river beds. And I'm fully in Dream River Bears. Uh, we would visit abandoned country cemeteries. Uh, or I would follow him up steep mountains. Yeah. Aiming for some cloud covered peak. Many times in later years, I would ask myself how it all began. I always had the odd to find the reason why the link. And when people ask me the reason why, the answer lies in Africa. <laughs> And when people ask me the reason literature and when people ask me the reason why the answer lies in my childhood see the answer lies in my childhood a best nest hungry in the corner of the veranda of my grandfather's house in the country uh, that nest had been there for as long as anyone could remember during autumn and winter it become empty crumbly dry fragment of mud uh. then the mess skies were once again filled with darts and bears screeches and perches animated the twilight and in a folly of activity the nest was renewed and inhabited the swallows were back where they came from how they could find exactly this spot on earth again pursued me for years later i realized that they could not be the same swallows forever and that an ancestral memory guided the young bears to a place once chosen by past generations uh, my desire to go to africa seemed to be an obscure yearning an inherited nostalgic need to migrate back to where our ancestors came from uh, it was a memory carried in my genes they all to fly home like the swallows like the swallows they all to fly home like the swallows See, one day the subject of the essay was the trial veteran in myself 20 years on my my script was returned without being marked um, i was 12 and my marks in compositions were usually good i did not understand what had happened this time i has put my heart into the effort of explaining what i wanted to do where i wanted to be in 20 years time um, listen the teacher a middle-aged woman with a dark mahogany hair looked me over her spectacles it was well written as usual she said but it is totally absurd or uh, you would have written something that is possible just as your friends have something you can do uh, you must certainly have a feasible desire for your future like being a doctor or a teacher or a mother perhaps a writer or even a dancer with your long legs something you can do here where you are born where your friends and your family are something normal uh, why did you have to write about africa i can still remember that day a cold foggy november most of winter and school days lay ahead uh, see most of until the until the summer i had my books and my dreams and i clung to them as to the lights my fantasies of hot lands on with unending horizons uh, animals in heads of animals in the savannah uh, yeah a farm in the highlands where i live with my family rising every early morning riding every early morning through the hills and plains uh, see 
We had dark skin people live whose strange languages I could understand. Who were still close to nature and knew his secrets. Uh, see. Ancient lakes with flamingos, dusty red tracks in, in thick bushes, uh, roaring lions in the vast darkness, uh, snow in buffaloes, yeah, sunsets of gold with fire, uh, fire and fire with your hotel giraffes, drums in the night, yeah, camping out at night near the river bank, see. But I do want to live in Africa I do not want to stay here all my life One day I shall go to Africa I shall send you a postcard from there, senora uh, I shall send you a postcard from there, senora I shall send you a postcard from there, senora in 20 years time, 20 years later I did One day when I was about 13 years old My father's voice suddenly changed and became a raucous hoarse whisper A sojourn, he had recognized the symptoms as being serious And the test confirmed his diagnosis, he had cancer of the throat Although nobody told us anything. See, but my younger sister and I felt that there was something different in the house. Conversations were hosted and a cloud of gloom hung above it. Uh, on the day of my father's oppression, they explained to us see, that he simply had a burning growth in his throat. Hmm. But I knew that this was a lie and he might be dying. For nights, I stared at the ceiling of my room, crying whole tears of depression. My father had survived his malignant cancer, uh, which diagnosed at an early age was, easy, was successfully removed uh, with a vocal cord. His beautiful voice never came back I miss his stories and his flair of enunciation uh, I felt his infirmity as crippling for me as he must have felt it But soon his voice, his spirit took over again And his voice became stronger Although he never found this music And was to remain worse for the, for the rest of his entire life In those days he began to talk to me about Africa and about the nomadic tribes in the desert that fascinated him. Soon he began traveling there regularly, beginning a love affair with the Sahara, which would last as long as he, which would live as long as he. I joined him a few times. The Tuaregs in the desert rode fast tall camels. Their lame bodies were wrapped in flowing blue robes, fastened at the waist by a belt inlaid with silver. They move like shadows, leaving hardly a track. In the chilly night of stars around the fire, we shared stringy ghost tunes which made my mouth smart. And sweet mint tea from glasses small as thimbles. Black janduras, Sheltered them from the wind, turbans protected their slit eyes from the fine penetrating sound. Lost jackals wind their sadness. Unto the barren dunes, unending like waves of sea, and the night listen. But this was not my Africa. Yeah. But this was not my Africa. This is the griot hip hop. You are now listening to the Aura Traditional Book Club. <laughs> to the Aura Traditional Book Club. <laughs> <laughs>